turf management, and cultural landscapes. Today, Charlie Pepper from the Olmsted Center will show us how using research, analysis, and planning can help us with managing turf. I want to talk about setting expectations and objectives for managing turf grass with, in this particular case, the overlay of managing cultural landscapes. So let's just start right in. What I want to do is consider how historic preservation research, analysis, and planning can help guide turf grass management in cultural landscapes and look at a few examples of turf management uh, that is currently occurring in some of our uh, more important cultural landscapes across the country. So with cultural landscape preservation, our objectives for their management uh, or for preservation management are to convey the landscape qualities or feeling of primary periods of significance, to try to retain the authenticity of historic materials and features, try to be consistent with current use and property management goals. So there are some sort of feasibility considerations that we do. We're not always trying to be 100% authentic. We need to think about how is that authenticity balanced with contemporary needs, like having visitors come to the site. We want to make sure that uh, what we're doing is affordable and sustainable, meets current code requirements and policies. Accessibility is, uh, is a key one for us. And we want to make sure that we are providing for interpretation, educational, and recreational value. But we do go through a process. And that process really provides us with information that we can use to effectively make decisions about what's our best strategy uh, for preserving and maintaining these historic properties. So first we look at research and documentation to really document the physical history and current conditions of a historic site, evaluate authenticity, integrity of that property, how much really remains from the historic period, and use that to identify important features that define the historic character of the place. What really makes this place look and feel like it did during the historic period? With that information, we do some treatment planning. We develop treatment plans which guide the implementation of actions that are really needed to effectively convey those qualities of the historic uh, character that we're trying to share with the visiting public for educational and interpretive purposes. And treatment, so going out and actually uh, caring for the landscape in such a way that it uh, presents uh, those historic qualities may include the removal of non-significant uh, elements that are there today and the reintroduction or replacement of missing historic features that have been lost over time. So one example of that is uh, Governor's Island in uh, New York Harbor, uh, which historically was a fortification, fortifying again uh, the city of New York and uh, Hudson River, dates back to the 18th century. And it remained a uh, Department of Defense uh, site uh, up until really just this past decade. Uh, that uh, par three golf course was on the, uh, was on the fortification itself. Uh, and um, actually remnants of it still remain uh, today. Uh, however, in the uh, preservation plan, while it is a nice lawn, I don't think it was maintained and sustainable using sustainable practices, however, uh, this lawn really uh, undermined the historic um, uh, topography and character of the site around the fort. And the treatment plan for this uh, particular historic site is to uh, return the topography, remove the golf course, and return the topography uh, to what it was uh, historically around the fort itself. The key with preserving historic sites and with understanding how to really set your objectives for managing turf grass in these historic properties 
is to really understand what your objectives are. What are you really trying to accomplish uh, with managing turf grass at a historic property? Uh, sustainability is an outstanding and should be one of our top priorities in turf grass management. Another consideration is uh, historic character. So, what do uh, two people eating bananas on a bench have to do with setting your uh, objectives and understanding what your expectations for turf management might be? Well, uh, when you choose a banana uh, to eat, you look at, uh, this is my preference, a nice, ripe, yellow, no spot banana, and that is my expectation of what I want out of, out of a banana when I'm sitting down on a bench to eat it. And if it looks like this, I want nothing to do with it. It's really about knowing what your objective is. What are you really trying to accomplish? And what is the expectation? Because for banana bread, this whole thing gets flipped around, and now the overripe banana is our good banana, and that's what we really want to get out of. That's, that's the type of banana we're looking for. So, how does a cultural landscape report figure out which banana you're trying to get to? Well, uh, there are a series of steps involved with uh, preparing a cultural landscape report that uh, help us, again, gather that information and make informed decisions specific to our individual properties. This is uh, one example, a very brief example, of uh, the Cultural Landscape Report for Sagamore Hill, National Historic, Historic Site. Again, the uh, home and uh, summer White House of Theodore Roosevelt on Long Island in New York. And historically, while uh, Theodore Roosevelt was at the property, the lawn, or the meadow lawn, the composition of it was a wide diversity of, uh, of meadow grasses, wildflowers, and some turf grasses uh, maintained roughly, uh, roughly cut uh, throughout principally the entire year. Um, that has changed over, over time uh, to anything from lawn to trees in turf, uh, and now with uh, preservation recommendations and treatment uh, strategy, we are returning it more to uh, have the appearance and character of, that, uh, of the meadow that was there during uh, Theodore Roosevelt's period at the site. Another example uh, is the turf management at Martin Van Buren National Historic Site. Martin Van Buren, uh, the eighth president of the United States, lived here between 1839 and 1864. And at the time, uh, the turf at his property had a mixed uh, type of management, meaning that right up near the house, you can see this area here around uh, this urn, was very uh, closely mown and very well cared for in terms of regular uh, maintenance practices. However, just outside of that front yard, uh, which uh, the entire uh, remaining portion of the front area of the property was very rough mowed. Um, it was mowed at about, or, or ma managed at about six to eight inches tall. So we entered into a, uh, an agreement with uh, the park and Cornell University to go into a research project, an on-site research project, to look at uh, turf management practices and turf composition, looking at turf species uh, and other grass species, to come up with the right mix of turf and, or, or turf composition, and maintenance practices, meaning equipment principally and mowing regime, uh, to effectively restore the character that was appropriate and authentic to Martin Van Buren's time period. We established a series of six test plots, uh, each one having a different uh, composition of, of uh, grasses, and worked with a local equipment dealer to test out 
uh, four or five different types of equipment uh, to ultimately uh, make a decision based on continued evaluations over that three or four year period of what equipment and what turf grass uh, species composition would give us the best results in terms of appearance and in terms of manageability uh, for the park. In terms of the composition, all of the grasses that uh, were recommended were identified as being present in New York, which is where the Martin Van Buren property is. It's uh, just south of Albany, New York. So all of the species selected were in fact in New York State uh, during the time period that uh, Martin Van Buren uh, resided at this property. Not only uh, did we have grasses, but there was also white clover uh, as, part of, uh, as part of the recommended mix. And white clover, uh, again, was uh, identified as being in New York State uh, during that time period. Also as part of the turf management plan prepared for the park, we looked at providing them with recommendations for zone management, meaning where should they rough cut the grasses, where should they uh, do a lower and f more finely manicured turf, and where can we just introduce meadow and not mow as frequently even as the uh, six inch turf. Not all parts of the same park or landscape need to have the same level of maintenance or turf grass quality expectations. You know, we can shift those uh, expectations depending on the particular sites or parts of the landscape that we need to uh, make some adjustments. As part of this plan, there's also a maintenance calendar, both a uh, what we call a quick reference calendar that you can just flip to and see what month you need to do a certain activity, but also accompanying this, a more detailed calendar, which expands on the activity, uh, how to perform that activity, and can easily tie into FMSS. So in thinking about applying cultural landscape preservation to the management of uh, turf grass at historic properties, uh, there are some critical pieces of information that help to ensure success, like understanding why the landscape is important, what the landscape is intended to look like, so you have understood expectations and objectives, what purpose the landscape is intended to serve, what the highest priority features there are to preserve, where landscape stewards, so those folks that are maintaining the landscape can obtain guidance. Management and field staff roles need to be understood in the preservation process and consistent so everyone knows that they're going in the same direction with, uh, with caring for the landscape and the turf. And the knowledge and skill of staff uh, in the preservation maintenance concepts and techniques is important so you, you can do your jobs effectively. What I've seen is that preservation may fail because first, limited resources. Second, the absence of guiding preservation information. Thirdly, unclear management goals and objectives. If you're working to accomplish one expectation that you think uh, the park has established and management thinks that uh, you're working to another expectation, well, it's going to unra unravel pretty quickly uninformed or misinformed management and staff, lack of preservation maintenance education, training and or skill, and poor and, and or inappropriate field practices. So with these things uh, not as part, of, or as part of the mix, preservation efforts and landscape management in general will, uh, will fail. So one last example it's just a series of, uh, I think, four or five images of uh, turf management at the White House over the years. And uh, what's great about that, just four series of slides or images uh, related to cultural landscape preservation and turf grass management in particular, is that over the course of 150 or so years, uh, the turf in the front of the White House, that White House lawn, using various techniques 
uh, has been sustained and preserved quite effectively.